Hello, hello, hello. Okay, uh, thank you so much for being in this, in this talk. And uh, I will try to summarize a bit of uh, what we have been doing at Collabora uh, in, the, in the recent year. Um, it is not my work, it is uh, work of many, uh, so, so please appreciate their work, like I had very little to do in this. So I've just, in preparation for this talk, I've had a look, uh, like how many comments were there, but I, um, it is that Collabora doesn't, uh, doesn't contribute only code, like we have uh, also people working on the QA, uh, working uh, on that also like in the, in the LibreOffice community. And, uh, and also on, on some other uh, like uh, more, more high level things like um, serving in the MC, serving in the board and these things. But like in this talk, I would like to, uh, to focus on mostly the, the code contributions and these things. So if we have a look like how many commits uh, we have done uh, since uh, the last year, it is uh, 2,570. And um, it is done. Uh, it was done by like these 24 people. Uh, so, so the, this is their work that, that I'm I'm going to, to be talking about. Um, in addition uh, to the working on the code itself, uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, supporting people um, mostly on the RC channel, but like also on the on the developer mailing list. Um, so some, sometimes asking, uh, so interacting with others, but also answering uh, various code-related questions if there was uh, if uh, there was a need for that. Uh, we were also joining uh, the ESC calls and hopefully like contributing positively there as well. If we look at uh, the um, the patch reviews and um, the like kind of uh, our involvement in the LibreOffice community. Uh, so, like when I, I was counting, like how many uh, how many patches were reviewed, then like I had to subtract the uh, some kind of like either self reviews or you know colleague reviewing some somebody else's code. Uh, so in master, uh, it was like 672 um, uh, commits in which uh, like collaborants were reviewing other people's code. So hopefully it's not too bad. Um, then, uh, like one of the things uh, that we were doing, and uh, it is like not uh, like directly uh, connected to uh, to some some features that were like paid by other companies. So so it was uh, it was mostly uh, like done uh, by the by the collabora for the community. Was lots of uh, cleanup and code improvements. Um, outstanding in these efforts is uh, is Noel Grandin. Uh, who has uh, done a tremendous amount of work like I was trying to go through all the comments but it was not possible so I was just scanning that like there was lots of changes of the of the mutex that we had uh, like our own uh, our own stuff in uh, in, um, in OSL changing that to the standard mutex then um, like own types for for sequences and and uh, these things were changed to std dqs std vectors uh, then um, using using the string view which uh, which helps you to not to have to allocate memory like in case uh, in case like you want to do do something with a string uh, making it like more efficient well it is kind of like micro optimization from one point of view on the other hand like it helps the code base uh, being more modern uh, then uh, using unique po pointer uh, instead of explicit allocations instead of like having to check for now just everywhere and on the other hand like in some cases it was it was like more more useful to actually use uh, the op uh, std optional instead of unique pointer so th things like that then like that was like one group uh, of things that he has done and then uh, using more concrete types uh, in chart 2 so so chart 2 was uh, was written uh, with uh, like a very you know alike approach and trying to show uh, show uh, trying to, to use like you know for everything lots of uh, lots of uh, abstraction there references to IDL and whatnot so uh, one of the things Noel is doing is using the concrete uh, types here so 
So uh, lots of us commit very like using SBX shape instead of like uh, CSS reference X shape whatever there. And uh, there were also some internal, you know, interfaces that were not needed, that were used only inside the chart too and defined there. So again, like remove this ideals for that and instead using the code like right away. Um, he has done lots, uh, lots of uh, uh, Clang tidy things, uh, also uh, created plugins and uh, and well. I am not sure like if he has created some new plugin um, this year, but definitely he was uh, he was applic uh, applying uh, the, the the existing plugins and doing code cleanups based on that. So removal of unused methods, removal of uh, unused fields. Um, there were some unnecessary virtual methods, uh, removing un unused code in general, and and stuff like that. Uh, then um, some other group of things he has done uh, as, the, as the code improvements were various optimizations uh, on, on various levels. Either it was like increasing the cache size of, of things or, uh, or like rewriting um, uh, pieces to use better data structures that were like more fit for the purpose in that given part of the code. Lots of bug fixes, um, ASAN, UBSAN, so, so like memory sanitization things and many, many more, like lots, lots of comments in there. Great stuff uh, from Noel, uh, thanks to him. Um, then other people were doing uh, various uh, uh, code cleanups as well. So for example, Mike uh, has, uh, has been using, uh, uh, has, has uh, like introduced uh, a new uh, method in OU string that, uh, that helps to avoid allocation uh, and um, like when you are like iterating, you do not have to uh, always like convert to, to string to do something. Uh, he has modernized uh, um, use of a Windows API, dropped some XP support on places, um, did some uh, simplified uh, some code that was uh, that was doing various uh, various conversions, uh, killed copy and paste uh, on many places, unified code. Uh, converted uh, lots of lots of macros to, to lambdas or or uh, or to templates uh, things like this. Then Miklos uh, has uh, like apart from lots of feature work he has done. Uh, he has been prefixing uh, members uh, of uh, various types for better readability. Was removing unused includes unused code things like that uh, and. Uh, what I think is uh, very important uh, in these things, uh, he has been documenting thing like the code that 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 was uh, that was like underdocumented and on the other hand like complicated. So 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 that is extremely appreciated at least from me. So uh, and many uh, many others uh, too. Like when they were doing something, usually like there was a bit of uh, cleanup associated with that as well. And I see I am going pretty quickly. But yeah, at least we will be on time next. So uh, then, apart from this, uh, there were new features uh, that were added uh, by Collabora. Um, I think uh, like there were some that uh, you have seen presentations about already, but let, let me uh, let me just remind them them here. So one of the things uh, were uh, like uh, huge spreadsheets. Uh, so uh, previously, uh, LibreOffice was limited uh, to uh, to much less uh, columns than than what uh, what was there in Microsoft Office, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was extreme, extremely problematic because uh, uh, because uh, like you were getting this uh, this error dialog when you were trying to load the sheet that that uh, that was over the limit. It was not trivial uh, to, to remove that, uh, so it was like part of the Noel's work, uh, but also of others uh, that uh, that like it was necessary not only to to increase the limit itself, uh, so like that would be easy just to change change the number there, but like uh, there were lots of associated data structures that were just not prepared for that. And uh, like, if you only change the, the constant to something larger, uh, like many things either didn't work, or if they worked, like uh, they were slow and uh, and not uh, not not performing or or causing problems. So this is now uh, done. This is now in, which is which is awesome. 
Then there was uh, uh, another feature uh, that was uh, created and uh, that is now part of the, uh, the LibreOffice uh, was uh, grammar checking on a server. So this is uh, implemented uh, using language tool and uh, like language tool um, previously already was integrated into, into LibreOffice but as an extension. Uh, the difference is that like uh, you can have the language tool uh, like locally uh, on your uh, on your machine uh, directly because like it's uh, an open source project unfortunately like it doesn't use some advanced uh, checking and the reason for that is that uh, they are using uh, some some ai engine and for that uh, like they are they they, they need uh, lots of uh, lots of computing power uh, on the on the gpu and so they are not providing that as, as part of this extension uh, it is only like running on their premises this thing so it is much more useful to to actually use this online service uh, for the uh, for the checking itself uh, it brings uh, m like very useful stuff that like you can see even the like various colors of the underlines uh, according to the uh, if it is like uh, spell checking problem or if it is like grammar checking problem or if it is just a recommendation um, of course uh, it is possible to use their free version uh, but like it is possible also to upgrade uh, to their uh, to their like full version and then like uh, put the key uh, into the dialogue uh, in in LibreOffice, uh, also like associated with that is uh, some um, some kind of like privacy concern. So it is off by default, but the user can explicitly go to the uh, to the, the tools options and uh, like see their uh, see their like uh, the, their pri privacy policy. So there is a link to the privacy policy, and if the user agrees to that, then uh, like uh, they can explicitly explicitly enable that and uh, and see that uh, functional uh, in LibreOffice. Um, then uh, there were the sparklines. Uh, I've, uh, well, Tomasz has, has already uh, had the presentation about the sparklines, so I, I suppose like you know uh, a lot about the sparklines these days, but like me, let me just summarize it for those like who haven't seen that talk. Um, the sparklines are like small graphs uh, that are like inside the cell uh, in, in a spreadsheet. Uh, so this was work that was funded by the European Union. Um, uh, Tomáš has, uh, has implemented that beautiful feature. Again, very important for interoperability. Sorry, interoperability. So uh, so it makes uh, it uh, advances LibreOffice again further uh, to to like being very well interoperable. Another thing. Uh, was uh, was WebP support, uh, so now all of the document uh, documents uh, are able uh, to to have uh, like not only like copying and pasting the WebP into into LibreOffice, but like you can save it, you can you can load it, have it there, um, which is which is good. Then another thing that uh, was uh, there was already a presentation about is is content controls. Um, again, a very important uh, interoperability feature uh, in Writer that uh, helps to creating forms that the, the users can then fill in. Uh, there are many types of the content controls uh, that you can have in Writer. Uh, so, like you can you can have rich text, uh, which uh, which is like more than just uh, just an input field. There, like you can do some styling in there. Um, you can have checkboxes, drop, uh, drop downs, uh, pictures, and date. Uh, again, uh, it was work uh, that was funded by the European Union. Then uh, it is uh, it is possible uh, to uh, to to create uh, um, uh, PDF forms a better way. Uh, so uh, so like you can uh, you can have it now uh, as this like including the dates and uh, and all these things that uh, that are possible. Uh, using the, the form controls as well. Uh, Sorry? Does that also include uh, opening the PDF forms and editing them or just uh, the, the export? No, no, no. It's only the export. 
uh, like with the with the opening and editing, like it's uh, more uh, and harder and more complex situation because like at the moment uh, we have. Or maybe should, should I uh, finish first and then uh, uh, tell, tell it after? Like it's a very interesting problem. I'm very happy to talk about that. Uh, but like, let me finish that. Like it is uh, two, three more slides, and and, and I will go into this. Um, so, so so that's 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 it. And another thing that is uh, again like uh, trying to to to, to um, proceed with, with a feature uh, that is very important in the Microsoft Office world uh, is uh, theming uh, in Impress. Uh, so if you have been using the, the, the like modern PowerPoint, uh, you could see that they have, uh, they have uh, um, very advanced possibility of the theming of the slides. So now like, uh, it is uh, very easy there to just uh, just like uh, put the text somehow and pictures somehow like into the slide, not caring at all about the layout, and then uh, like on the right hand side, like you will see some previews of the co uh, of the of the slide uh, that is somehow they they say like they use some AI for like generating that I don't know if that's true or not, but like one of the things that this is using heavily is the theming. And uh, if we want to, uh, to to bring a feature like this into uh, into LibreOffice at some stage, like the theming is uh, one of the building blocks that is very important for that. So so I'm very happy that that uh, we have at least some support for the theming these days, and hope that it will uh, it will like get us uh, again further uh, in the LibreOffice uh, possibilities in in Impress. Then. Uh, we have uh, the uh, we have implemented the the data tables, which are like small tables under the charts that make the presentation of the data uh, much more convenient uh, from the user point of view. Like it is just one click in the in the uh, in the uh, dialog, but like from the usability point of view, uh, makes the makes uh, the charts just much more readable and better. And the uh, last thing that, that I have here in the slides is uh, Deeple uh, translation. So it was, uh, it was work that was funded uh, uh, or co-funded by, by Edfinis. And uh, it is now that uh, similarly to, uh, to the language tool, uh, you, have, uh, you have a dialogue in tools options where you can specify like what Deeple instance to use and, and you can see the privacy policy. And then, like, if you enable that, you can select the paragraph and uh, and then just uh, hit translate and uh, like choose the language, and it will translate it. And it will translate not only the text; uh, it uh, also um, like preserves some of the uh, some of the styling of that. So, like the bold, italic, and, and these things or underlines. Um, it is unfortunately limited. Uh, because uh, because uh, the the, ver uh, the how is it done is that like we convert uh, the paragraph to HTML, send it uh, send it to Deeple uh, to to translate the H HTML. They are like uh, reasonably uh, able to uh, like preserve like um, where it is like starting and, and ending in the translated thing, and then uh, put it back. Um, like uh, convert it again from HTML into uh, into something that we paste instead of the original paragraph and and have that translated. So I I think very useful thing to have as well. And in addition to that, um, like uh, we have exposed lots of these things also to LibreOffice Kit so that like we can use it in the Collabora Online. Um, but like, let me uh, let me list that what is now possible to use uh, from the from the Collabora, uh, sorry, from the LibreOffice Kit uh, point of view. So it is that like anybody who would be interacting with uh, with LibreOffice using LibreOffice Kit can can use that. So now it is possible to add custom fonts uh, or uh, or be notified about missing fonts. Uh, so that like the, it is possible to create some user interface to upload new fonts. Controlling this, this content controls, uh, things like uh, form field button, drop down, picture date, um, callback for print ranges. So like it is possible to see in the spreadsheet uh, what like what are the the boundaries for the 
for the printing and uh, also like math uh, for more related uh, improvements uh, uh, so that uh, so that it is ultimately possible to uh, to have uh, a math formula uh, edited uh, edited via the LibreOffice kit as well so that's it from me So before any other questions, I will quickly ask, answer this, uh, uh, this PDF import. So actually in LibreOffice there are currently two uh, ways of uh, PDF import. So one is the original one using LibPopular uh, that is like very old uh, from the licensing reasons. It has to be a diff uh, like separate, uh, separate uh, binary and it then like streams some commands into LibreOffice and uh, from that like uh, it builds uh, uh, it builds uh, the document and like this way like uh, you cannot have a like extremely good fidelity but on the other hand like you get all the content uh, from the PDF then there is another possibility and that is using uh, that is using uh, the oh help me PDF film uh, it is using PDF film, which is uh, which is uh, the library that is uh, being used in Chromium uh, for PDF uh, like showing, and it has perfect fidelity. The downside of that is that uh, in uh, on the page it is uh, it is a picture. Um, so there are plans uh, to well, like uh, Tomas has, uh, has has improved that so that. Uh, so that it is possible to insert comments and treat them uh, the normal way, but there are like in general plans to to be able to extend that uh, to to forms and these things. But well, like Tomas will be able to tell you much more. Um, anything else? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Um, you mentioned uh, theming in uh, in impress presentations, and uh, I would I would assume that bef that before work on that there would be work on uh, on uh, supporting uh, styles like more kinds of styles in impress, so paragraph and character styles, and and maybe also styles for graphical objects which aren't pages. Anyway, enhancing the style support and then doing the theming on top of that. So if it's not done on top of that, um, what is, what is the, the approach? So if I remember correctly, like these things are a bit orthogonal. So the, the, the styles uh, can use the themes. Uh, so, so it is not that the theme would be using some, some, some different style. So, so it is that like inside the style, like you, you can also do the themes or something like that, but like Again, uh, Tomas would, would know uh, much much more and uh, much better. But he seems to, to, to agree with me, at least like uh, uh, his, from what I see with his body language. So.